Hi, this is S. Vijay Jagdish. Uh, in this class, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, Indian polity, the preamble. Okay. So, preamble is the most important aspect of the uh, constitution. It starts, it is a starting, it is a beginning. Okay. See, if you take any book, okay, the first page will be always a preface. So, it's exactly the same. Preamble is nothing but a preface to the constitution. Okay. So, in this class, we will be saying like where is it originated from, what are the components of the preamble and what is the importance of preamble in our exam. Okay. And uh, various aspect like is it amendable, was it a part of the constitution, all those aspects will be seeing in this preamble class. So, how this preamble has come into our constitution? Okay, the preamble has been borrowed from the US constitution, from USA, this has been brought to India by our Jawaharlal Nehru, our Prime Minister, first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru brought this from USA to India. Okay, so therefore we can say that our constitution, Indian constitution as well as the US constitution both start with the same three letter word, we the people. So, we here in India, we say we the people of India, whereas in US, they will say we the people of America. Okay, so that is how it starts. So, the people are giving this constitution, that is why it starts with we the people of India and ends with the concept we hereby en enact and adapt this constitution. That means, the people are giving this constitution to themselves. Okay. Now, what are the aspects we are getting this? I told you that this is a preface of the constitution. So, write down it is a preface of the constitution, it is a preface of the constitution, it is an introduction to the constitution, okay. it is preface, it is introduction to the constitution and it is also giving a brief, brief idea what is our constitution is all about. Okay. So, brief idea of the constitution is also given by the preamble. Okay. Now, uh, preamble starts with we, uh, the people of India, were solemnly resolved to constitute India into. Okay. So, people are making India into what? Okay. First one is sovereign. So, we write down this word sovereign. Okay. Second one is socialist, secular, democratic, and republic. So, there are five words which you need to be very thorough in it. Okay. And you should know the meaning of these five words also. Okay. First one is sovereign. <laughs> sovereign means completely independent. Okay. India is a completely independent country. It is not, uh, it is not uh, no, interfered by anybody else. Nobody is interfering the affairs of India. Okay. Nobody is externally controlling India. We are managing ourselves. Okay. We have elected the government. Whatever happens, we are doing it on our own. I will give an example example we are member of un okay or we are member of commonwealth or member of sark bimstick lot of association we are member but all these memberships are voluntary in nature that means whenever we want that we are don't want this we can uh, come out of it or they are saying something um, it is not binding on us okay so all this are because we are sovereign country okay so we'll ask will uh, you may you be thinking like is it possible that any country will be there which is not a sovereign yes there are certain countries like australia or to some extent canada Okay. These are the countries which is not a sovereign country, they still they are coming under the UK, they are dominion status. Okay. Sovereign country is completely independent, it takes its own decision. I okay. will give you an example where we have taken our own decision. Uh, have you heard about the S-400? Okay. S-400 uh, is a air defense mechanism we are buying from Russia. Okay. Now, Russia and the USA, they know that the, the bipolar world both are no enemy. Okay. So, USA uh, saying India, like uh, do not buy this S-400 from uh, Russia, we will give you uh, something better. But we have uh, technological, technologically we have compared it. We found that yes, 400 is far more better than their system. So we are saying that we will buy. Okay, so even though US is putting indirectly pressure on India, we are saying no, no, no. See, we will decide what we want to do with the respective the other country. You don't interfere in affairs. Okay, so that is what is the sovereignty of the country. We are completely independent. Nobody can question us. Nobody can put pressure on us on from any other um, any other angle or whatever aspect it is. So we take decision. We have independent foreign policy. So, all this is known as sovereign. So, India is a sovereign country. Okay. So, that is mentioned in the preamble. So, that is the first aspect of Indian government. Second one is Indian government is a socialistic government. Okay. This is a socialistic word is not uh, originally present in the preamble. It was added by 42nd Amendment Act. Okay, And 42nd Amendment is the only amendment that happened in the preamble. So, socialist country means it is it is saying like something which is leaning with the socialism, Okay, but not exactly socialism. Like socialism means you may think that uh, the, all the means of production will be owned by the government, Okay, but that is not the case in India. India has adopted something called mixed economy. Okay, What happens in mixed economy? Uh, you know, if you want to go and buy a SIM, a SIM card for your phone, uh, you have option BSNL is there, Geo is there, Yatel is there, n number of other things are there. Okay. Now, if you imagine only only one BSNL is there, 
okay and you don't want to buy the mobile sim card isn't it <laughs> no, no. so that is that is the, that is the idea that is the idea where everything is sold by only by the government okay only by the government in that case we call it as socialism okay or in other terms you write down all the means of production all the means of production is owned by the government that is known as socialism okay so india has not adopted socialism but it is a leaning towards socialism and they called as a socialistic society so socialistic society okay that means equality in opportunity everybody has got equal opportunity they can do whatever business they want they can do whatever profession they want which is legally allowed that is a socialistic society okay third one is which defines the indian um, indian system of governance is secularism okay so what they are saying so overing socialist and secular secular means the state will not have any religion on its own okay if you have a passport of india you can see uh, it is written as republic of india isn't it okay it is not like hindu republic of india islamic republic of india okay but if you take an example of pakistan passport you'll see that islamic republic of pakistan okay so the state is totally disassociated with the religion that concept is known as secularism indian indian secularism far more better than the western secularism because western secularism they have called they call irreligious you cannot do anything you cannot wear durban you cannot uh, have a cross uh, all this is not possible that is a western type of secularism but in india we allow people to practice their rituals okay the government will not interfere okay so that kind of very liberal secularism is there in india so indian indian uh, so indian society is secular society and we do have a fundamental right under article uh, 25 to 28 the right to religion is a fundamental right okay so that is a third aspect okay then fourth aspect of indian uh, system of governments is democratic democratic what is democratic see write down democratic means a people rule okay the demo word comes from the democracy as uh, so, de demographic okay that means people okay so people rule people rule okay we elect the prime minister the government is i have voted and i have elected my government okay and if i don't like then next election i can change them also okay so democratic governments people rule now you can recollect what abraham lincoln has said about democracy for the people by the people and of the people okay that is exactly what is democratic so indian constitution or indian uh, system of government is a democratic government where people elect the uh, government and they rule as long as people want them to rule okay if you want to change you can change the ruler also and that is what we have seen we were not happy with the manmohan singh and we have uh, elected modi and next again we were happy with uh, modi next time we have selected him next time i don't think modi will be happy we will not select so whatever want we can change so you can say every time when the election happens there is a change happening and that is because that is what the india's democracy and you also know that indian democracy is the largest democracy and you know when uh, in recently when uh, in you when our prime minister was speaking uh, he was uh, he was saying that i am the prime minister of india have been elected by the largest number of people in the world okay so such a such a big mandate he got that this much of people have uh, have not voted a single person in the in the in the recent past or in the entire history of the uh, democracy so that is what india's largest democracy you can say okay and the last word about the indian system of government uh, is republic form of government what do you mean by the word? republic form of government okay republic means see uh, we have uh, head of the state and head of the government both are different okay head of the state is different head of the government is different head of the state is the president head of the state is president head of the government is prime minister okay so he prime minister is uh, ruling the uh, ruling the country his his representation of india's democracy whereas the elected president underline the word elected president elected president means the head of the state or the president is elected by the people but it is indirectly but it is indirectly but still he is elected and anybody can become the president of india okay we have ramnath kovind now we had uh, shankar dayal sharma k r narayan pratibha patil anybody can become president of india head of the state okay so such a society is known as republic form of government but when you go to the uk uk is democratic but they are not republic okay they have got prime minister they do have a election but the head of the state is queen head of the state is queen she is not elected okay and nobody um, nobody else from the family that means apart from that family apart from the royal family commoner cannot become the head of the state but not like the case of india 
India, anybody can become president of India. So that is why we are republic form of government. The only thing which defines republic republic form of government is the head of the state is elected by the people of India. Okay, elected by the people of that country. But in case of India, it is the indirect election. During the presidential election, I will tell you how that is getting elected. Okay. So the preamble gives the form of government in India. The form of government is sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic and republic. Okay. Then in the preamble, they are talking about justice also. Justice, nyaya. Nyaya. Okay. What kind of nyaya? What, they, what kind of justice they are giving? Okay. There are three types of solution. SEP. The social justice. Okay. Economic justice and political justice. Okay. So, three types of justice is mentioned in the preamble and that is given to the people. And uh, today we are uh, we are equal, right? Okay. You and me or anybody in this country will have a same kind of punishment for same crime. Okay. And uh, we have abolished untouchability. Okay. And there is no titles given to anybody under Article 18. So, all this makes the India as an egalitarian society. Okay. What is that? Egalitarian Society. That means equal society. Everybody in India is equal. Okay. So social justice have been achieved in India. Okay. Under various experts, you can say Article 14 to 18 under the fundamental right talks about right to equality. Okay. So by everybody is equal. Now come to the economic justice. Second aspect, economic justice. Uh, have you achieved the economic justice? Do you have a same salary as I am having? or anybody else okay we do have people who are poor they are not able to have their food uh, on proper time okay hunger hunger is there rich is there poor is there ultra rich ultra poor so the society is not having an economic justice even though it is in pension in the preamble that there is an economic justice but economic justice is not achieved what we can do can we go to the supreme court not possible because the preamble is right down the word the preamble is not justiciable the preamble is not justiciable okay that means whatever mentioned in the preamble okay it, if you are not getting it if it is not achieved you cannot go to the court okay so preamble is not uh, not justiciable okay and that is why economic justice is not achieved okay but still government is trying for it okay like oh, your own your own uh, history if you look or my own history over the last 20 years or 10 years we have improved our livelihood okay so that is happening but it will not happen on one fine morning okay so on the government's part they are doing every government has been uh, implementing lot of schemes for the various pay section of the society okay but it cannot be turned that everybody is having a equal payment that is not possible okay so economic justice being tried but if you don't get this you cannot go to the court because preamble is not justiciable okay so then third justice is about political justice have you achieved political justice okay if you are above 18 you can vote okay so we have achieved political justice so social justice is achieved economic justice is not achieved but political justice is also achieved anybody above the age of 18 can vote in india and that is what is known as uh, universal adult franchisee okay so we have justice social justice economic justice and political justice in the same order guys that is also very important that means they will ask you in this which order it is mentioned because okay. that is why you remember my code s e p s e p okay then talks about liberty Okay, liberty means freedom. Okay, liberty means freedom. Okay, what are the liberty they are giving? Liberty of thought, expression. Okay, so just liberty means freedom. So you can think about what you want to think. You can think. Okay, and you can express yourself. Liberty of expression is there. Okay, we do have Article 19, a fundamental right, freedom of speech and expression. Okay, so freedom of thought is there. Freedom of so these words also you should remember. Okay, they'll ask you something extra. Uh, liberty of information. Okay, is it mentioned in the preamble? It is not mentioned in the preamble. Okay, so what is mentioned? Liberty of thought is mentioned. Liberty of expression is mentioned. Liberty of uh, belief, okay, faith and worship. Belief, faith and worship. This is what is mentioned in the preamble about the liberty. Then one more word is in preamble is the fraternity. Okay, fraternity means brotherhood. Okay, you remember that in our schoolings uh, we have taken uh, oath. Okay, India is my country or like this something. Okay, India is my country uh, or like this. Okay, uh, I, all my all uh, no, all Indians are my brothers and sisters. Okay. So that, that kind of feeling of brotherhood is also mentioned in the uh, preamble. Okay. Then they talk about uh, equality, equality of status and of opportunity. Okay. So every word in the preamble has to be there in your mind okay. because the questions can come from any angle. Okay. So fraternity is mentioned and equality is mentioned. Equality about, about two things. One is status and of opportunity. Equality of status. Everybody is equal okay. and opportunity is also equal. Okay. So this is mentioned in the preamble. Then, very important aspect of the preamble is uh, they are also giving the date of 
adoption of the constitution okay all of you know that uh, 26 january 1950 there was a full uh, constitution coming into force but even before that in 1949 uh, okay 26 january 1950 is a full enforcement of the constitution but in 49 26 november 1949 uh, the constitution was formally adapted that means accepted okay not coming into force so that date is also mentioned in the preamble so preamble has okay uh, in this constitution assembly on this date of 26 november 1949 we do enact and adapt this constitution okay that is mentioned okay and the end they say that this uh, preamble okay we are given by by uh, people to themselves we give ourselves this constitution okay so in the preamble at the end line they are saying we give we ourselves giving this constitution to themselves means to the people and that is why you have to write down one more point here the source of authority the source of authority why i should obey the constitution from where it gets the power it gets the power from the people okay we the people of india it starts with the we the people of india and hence we give ourselves this constitution okay so people are giving to them themselves and the source of authority of the power power of the constitution coming from the people themselves okay so that's what we have seen so this is the preamble okay i said it is coming from uh, um, it is coming from uh, usa brought by jawaharlal nehru one more point you can note down okay it was introduced in the constituent assembly it was introduced in constituent assembly by jawaharlal nehru uh, in the form of objective resolution what is that objective resolution what is the what is the objective of this constituent assembly and uh, then this objective resolu resolution was accepted as a preamble of the constitution okay now so this is what the constitution the preamble is all about now other aspect of the preamble Okay, and I told you socialistic word was not originally present. It was introduced by the uh, 42nd Amendment Act. Likewise, uh, likewise, uh, there's other word called secular, okay, integrity, okay. So, write down heading called amendability of the preamble. Uh, initially, initially means till 1973, I can say, or I can say, write down this year, 1960, 1960, in a case called Beru Bari case. What is that? Beru Bari case. And the Supreme Court said that preamble is not a part of the constitution. Okay, they said, it is a not part of the constitution and it cannot be amended also okay so thereby it was no amendment was possible okay but they changed their stand okay in 1973 in a case called keshavananda bharati case what is that keshavananda bharati case they said preamble is very much part of the constitution and it can be amended and accordingly by 42nd amendment act it was amended um, and there was three word you can see this ssi okay ssi that is socialist secular and integrity of india this three word were added by 42nd amendment uh, in 1976 and that is the only time when the preamble was amended also okay so preamble is part of the constitution it can be amended okay now coming to the other aspects of the preamble okay uh, like you can say this this is being asked so you can say uh, it is known as horoscope of the constitution okay Pre preamble is known as horoscope of the constitution it was said by km munshi km munshi is the person who said preamble to be the horoscope of the constitution and the preamble is also regarded to be the key to unravel the minds of the makers of the constitution that means what was there in the mind of the people who made this constitution okay if you if you go into the constitution you may not understand but if you read the preamble what was the aspect in which they were trying to make the constitution so that is why I say it is a key to unravel the minds of the makers of the constitution okay so preamble very important question very important questions coming from this uh, mcqs are coming okay and also mains level you can say descriptive questions also coming in that they can ask you like what are the words mentioned in this okay when was this amended uh, what are the words were added to it okay i'll tell you one confusing things See, sovereignty, sovereignty, unity and integrity is mentioned in the uh, preamble, right? Okay. In the fundamental duty also it is mentioned uh, to protect and uphold the sovereignty, unity and integrity. Okay. This two nail confuse, but the only thing is you have, to, you have to see very properly to uphold and protect if it is coming, it is fundamental duty. If that is not mentioned, then it is a uh, preamble. That is a preamble. Okay. So, this is all about the preamble. We will see the next chapter. Thank you.